This is the AMC Plus Interview with the Vampire Podcast, and I'm your host, Naomi Ekparrigan, writer, comedian, and a vampire lover who is now lost because her vampire show is over. Now, y'all, we've talked about every episode of AMC's Interview with the Vampire, and it has been a journey. Today, however, we are doing something a little different. First, we get up close and personal with the mysterious Rashid. Yes, we've got actor Asad Zaman, who wowed us all in the finale. Asad, welcome. So happy to have you on the podcast. Hi, Naomi. Thank you for having me. I play Rashid in Interview with the Vampire. Well, well, okay, now, <laughs> we know Rashid is not Rashid. Okay? What? what do you know? We know Rashid is Armand. Oh, no, Don't she said it. with me. Shh, no one's supposed to know. We all know. Oh, great. Okay. Hey, hi. Hello, guys. Uh, so, I'm Asad, and I play Armand. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ooh, ooh. Oh, the dramatic reveal had me the most dramatic of reveals. Now, can you just say, who is Armand? We need to know, who are you? So Armand comes into the picture, into Louis's life in the second half of Interview with a Vampire after the events of New Orleans. They meet in Paris and Armand is immediately, like most people, completely enthralled by everything about Louis and who he is and what he stands for. And he's changed from person he is before he met Louis, which was a person uh, a bit lost in the monotony of his life, I think, is the way I describe it. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, it's been 500 years. It's definitely gotten monotonous. <laughs> mm, 514. Okay, yeah. yes, 514. <laughs> it's like, okay, yes, we get it. You needed some love in your life. Yeah. Now, did you know from the beginning, like when you got the sides for this character, were you told you were ultimately going to be playing Armand? I think, Naomi, if I knew from the beginning that I was auditioning for Armand, I would never be here. <laughs> I think the <laughs> think just the prospect, the idea, the the notion of that would... Uh, send me over the edge. And <laughs> I would completely crumble. Of course, of course. Um, no, I had no idea. So I got an audition with a couple of scenes with Daniel Malloy. And it was a character called Rashid, who is the assistant. And they were fairly clear, concise. And I kind of was like, okay, I, I, I know who this guy is. He's highly efficient. He has skill and care in what he does. And it's a very clear part to play. And I kind of went in and did those tapes fairly confidently. And then I got a recall and I got another scene added, which had a bit more subtext. And I was like, well, Rashid has a bit of, of a sting to him than I thought he would be able to have, <laughs> you know, with his status. And then I get a third recall and Rollin asked to have a meeting with me on Zoom. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he asked if he could just have a quick chat about the character with me, give a few notes, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, of course, it'd be an absolute, uh, it'd be amazing to, to meet you and, and chat. Thinking, why? <laughs> why is he wasting his time talking to me about Rashid when you've got Louis and Lestat? to sort of focus on. I was like, who the hell is Rashid? Anyway, I'm like terrified. So I get onto Zoom with him and then he went, okay, okay. So um, basically Rashid is in disguise and he's not Rashid. He's actually the vampire Armand. Oh man. And then he proceeds to tell me all about Armand and I'm sat there on Zoom like this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and all the while I've got my hand on the chair, kind of gripping it tighter and tighter to where the handle's going to break. And I'm just thinking, just don't lose your cool. Don't lose your cool. Don't lose your cool. Anyway, he kind of took me through it and he just went, so look, this is, this has to be a secret. We don't, we don't want to, we don't want to leak this, but that means we just want to see a bit more from you. And I said, oh my God, thank you so much for, you know, telling me. And, and yes, of course, I want to kind of, you know, see, see where I can go with this. And then I got off the call and I almost started crying. <laughs> <laughs> so how much time did you get though? How much time did you have between having that conversation and having that next call back? Because you basically need to reinterpret the whole character. You have to go from being like, I'm a no-nonsense assistant to I am the vampire king. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and how do you do that in a, in a tape? Exactly. They gave me maybe eight or nine hours between that call with Rollin and the next tape that, that I sent over. And I did another, I think another four rounds after that. 
No, three or four rounds that's after insane. That. Yeah, yeah. It was a grueling process. That's wild. So now Rowlin has already told you about the third audition, who Rashid is. But once you get to set, everyone knows, right? Or is it still a secret you're withholding? Actually, I think, apart from the main cast, a lot of the crew didn't know. Wow. You just kind of say, like, quiet in a corner and say, like, I don't want to just even draw attention, maybe they'll forget. <laughs> yeah, that was my initial kind of approach to Rashid before I th- knew he was Armand. He just wants to make sure he does a really good job and that he doesn't get fired or killed. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, simple joys, yeah. simple joys, simple goals. <laughs> Now, while you were filming the first season, what conversations did you have with Rollin about the plan for Armand in the show? We did discuss, obviously, the events that happen in interview when we see him and when we're going to see him in season two. Mm-hmm. A lot of those are, are crucial elements in Louis' story and in turn Armand's. And we want to honor them as much as we can. Where we, uh, I guess, where Rollin has curiosities is when we look into Armand's past and look into how he became who he is and where he came from. There's some obvious differences to me Mm -hmm. that I think we want to explore and we want to see whether there's anything interesting to be picked from that. And it's a really delicate thing, I think, because his story, it's so complex and it's so... He's messed up. What? You mean a vampire is messed up? Oh, okay. I don't know if I can handle that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, we think vampires are messed up in general. I mean, he was messed up before he became a vampire. Mm. In order to sort of understand where he is now, you need to understand the trauma of of his life. Yeah. So there's things that we want adapting and and mutating and, and flowering into new things. But the events that make Armand who he is have to be traumatic enough and nuanced enough and complex enough for us to believe that he turns into this who he is well well now you know given all this what you're saying too it does now kind of still a nightmare but explain the seven rounds of auditions Mm. yeah i'm gonna tell you this though aside honey your eyes are everything and the eye work that's happening in season one there are so many moments where you like come in and just like Give Malloy a look or give Louie a look without oh, saying a word. It was, I used to, I used to leave set sometimes thinking, bloody hell, I said, you're extra with those, uh, with those <laughs> eye rolls and with those looks sometimes. <laughs> like, you need to, you need to hang back. And I think, you know, all props to the editing team who have to sift away through all those <laughs> dirty looks that he gives him and, and go, okay, let's just, let's just make it nuanced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was also very aware, I think just as an actor, that I have a duty to the story that's being told in that moment, right there, right now, this season, mm-hmm. is Louis' story, is Louis recounting his life to to Daniel. And their dynamic as well is really important. So as much as I knew Armand had to be sizzling in the background and, you know, he had to come in and make himself, you know, present when he wants to be and then also back away, I was like, I have to sort of honour their story as well. I, we don't want the audience to start asking too many questions right. too early because then it deviates from what's important, what the themes that are important to explore in the season. I do think what made that moment, like Rashid reveals himself, I screamed. And I think that is a testament to the way you played it. It only works because Rashid has so cleverly, it's almost like you kind of forgot about him. And then it's like, what? Love of his life? And then I, of course, then I said, honey, Louis, you've learned nothing. You do not need <laughs> another older vampire up in here who can walk in the sun. Yeah. Well, honey, that's a power dynamic right there. Well, yeah, exactly. We we just hope that he's not making the same mistakes all over again. We hope. I mean, I'm very invested. I get very stressed out. I, I yelled at Jacob about it. <laughs> Given what we have seen... And again, it's it's little, it's you know these mm-hmm. small moments. What do you think of the relationship? Like, would you say like, do you believe Armand and Louis have a healthier relationship? Oh, we're just gonna have to find out. <laughs> I will say that Armand is a lot more tender in his loving than Lestat. Like, if I had to say Lestat is amazing as at showing love and showing the romance and showing the theater of of love like he he embodies it so well and he 
you know, he exudes it. Mm. Armand receives love more. Armand, he's quite desperate to receive love. He isn't as well versed in in the language of romance, mm. I think. That doesn't mean that he doesn't want it. He really, mm. really does want it. It is interesting just to think about him that way, especially given the role he's playing. Because my question would be, why is he pretending to be Rashid this whole time? And how does it feel for Armand to have to hide who he really is? Mm. I think it's incredibly painful for him to be witness to the love of his life, talking about another love of his life. Mm -hmm. The way he describes Lestat, the way he looks, and the way he kind of embellishes in those in going away with those memories of Lestat is so painful for, for Rashid slash Armand to listen to and, and mm. be witness to. And then there is also curiosity with, with Daniel that is another aspect of why Armand let this interview take place. I think there's a hidden history with right. Daniel or hidden kind of story there. Right, right. Because Rashid was there during that first interview with Malloy, right? And once you discover that, a lot of Rashid's behavior makes sense. I don't mean to bring it back to my favorite thing, which is your eye work. But when I go back to those scenes, I get these moments from Rashid slash Armand where he is almost like waiting to see if Malloy remembers him. Yeah. And I think this is another brilliant aspect to the show that that makes it exciting for not only the fans of the book, but all the new fans as well, is that we don't know now. We actually don't know what transpired in San Francisco because this is new territory because mm -hmm. he's not there in the books. We were all under the assumption that Louis was on his own when they first met him and mm -hmm. Daniel. So that whole world is going to be another aspect that's going to be really interesting to explore. Right. How far did Louis get? Right. And what did Armand have to do to stop him? And has that got anything to do with why Daniel is there now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, given that we are at the end of season one, you know, look, me and all the other viewers, we're beside ourselves. Okay. We're struggling. We are making <laughs> friendship bracelets. We are on a crisis chain. Okay. <laughs> What we need is something to hold on to, something to look forward to in this dark, dreary life. That is why I need you. I need you here for an extended version of what we call a little taste. All right? This is the segment where we talk about what's to come. And we just need to know, can okay. you just give us a little taste <laughs> of what's to come in season two? I can promise you theatrics. Thank you. Thank you. I know that there's going to be Vespers oh. and, and romance is going to be in the air. Okay, can you tell me where we are? Where are we geographically? Oh, we're, we're in Paris. Sorry, I should, have, I should have led with that. Okay, so the first thing I can promise you, we're going to be going to Paris. Gorgeous, gorgeous, just like Carrie Bradshaw. Exactly, and, and it's a gorgeous part of the story and their journey to Paris is, is incredible and the showdown has to happen in Paris. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have to go there. Yeah. Okay, that's good. This is good. This is something to hold on to, something for my fanfic. We love this. <laughs> I'm very obsessed. Oh, God, what's my legacy going to be? Do you know what I mean? I'll be watching. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> so, okay, now I'm just, now I've lost the plot. You've already got an amazing legacy, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, now that's how you end a season of a podcast. A guest telling you you have an amazing legacy. <laughs> um, Asad, thank you so, so much for taking the time to talk to me. And it is just so exciting to talk to you, especially because, I mean, honey, a dramatic reveal, if there ever was one. <laughs> thank you so much. This has been super cathartic for me as well, because I think I'm getting ulcers all over my stomach <laughs> from, from holding it in for so long. <laughs> It's nice to let it out, yes. you know, it's nice to go, ah. And all we need to do now is just unleash our mind in season two. Ooh, I can't wait. Okay, so you're going to be back on the pod, okay? Because we're going to have a lot to get into. So you just better get used to this because I'll be like, Asad, <laughs> Asad, I have questions. I have questions. I need answers. <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll be ready. 